Points to the Daily Wire for relevance in the documentary debut. I mean, maybe they planned it this way. Maybe they were early enough in their planning to make it work amid the Supreme Court decision that might be happening pretty soon. But Choosing Death, The Legacy of Roe. Obviously, you read the title, and this is ever centered around Roe v. Wade, uh, the decision from the Supreme Court many years ago that essentially made uh, 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 substantiated abortion as a federal matter rather than a state's issue. But amid the news right now about the Supreme Court decision that you know, Roe v. Wade could be overturned and the rights to, I know people are kind of, there, there's all this hubbub happening right now, but largely the decision, if you're not even engaged with the argument, maybe you've been misguided by certain voices. Roe v. Roe v. Wade isn't overturning abortion outright, but what it's doing is it's, um, I, I would love to see that, but it's that's not what's happening. Instead, what's happening is it's reverting to a state's rights issue. So therefore, you know, the states make a decision. It's not federal sweeping over states that might not necessarily want to carry on the legacy that Roe has left. But I'm excited to see if the Daily Wire delve more into the documentary space. It's not their first picture that's done this. I mean, this is totally a good fit for them as, you know, the Daily Wire, for those of you who might not be familiar, they're a pretty big media company. They deal a lot with, like, mainstream news headlines and stuff like that, but they've broadened out their horizons as well into uh, the realm of cinema and movie pictures and movie production. They've done this as well for some of their own... Uh, uh, Film releases being, you know, like Shut In, Run, Hide, Fight, Terror on the Prairie, that new Gina Carano movie I'm very excited for. But primarily, they're news media driven, right? They've made a lot of, uh, they've actually created, I'm sure, much of their business off that model. And they've got projects that have fit. So like, you know, with previous releases, China, the Enemy, Enemy Within, for example, they got another one about uh, Dr. Fauci. They also have one now for Choosing Death, the Legacy of Roe. And I'm sure they're going to add more documentary titles into their library. I know they have, but this should be interesting. Again, I, I'm not sure how well delivered this was in terms of the planning but the timed release of it is very interesting that again it's it's matching that SCOTUS decision but for those of you who aren't familiar I mean again you read that plot, the ta uh, yeah, title and it's pretty straightforward primarily being you know episode around the Roe v. Wade matter but for those of you who want a deeper look um, this is what it says on the IMDb synopsis officially for the project. For half a century, the abortion industry has propped itself uh, up on legal perversion, political corruption, and medical malpractice. In its new original documentary, The Daily Wire takes a wrecking ball to the four core fallacies supporting the deadliest decision in history. So this is like a documentary slash argument picture. That's very interesting. You know, for me, I, I like that approach. Um, it it's taking a unique position because even for somebody like me, who's very familiarized with the practice of abortion and who's outright, I'm very much a pro-life person, not just based on my Christian sensibilities, but in the reality of what abortion does um, and just the procedure. I mean, I've seen more than enough photo evidence and, and, and description. I mean, I've watched videos from uh, uh, abortion doctors, Anthony Levitino, I believe, being one, or Dr. Anthony Le Levitino, I should use this title, being one, um, where he described the process. And to me, there's just no other way to see it beyond it's just, it just comes off as so barbaric. And even the photos that sometimes you've seen from whether they've been committed abortions or abortion procedure has gone wrong. I mean, there's a story I recently, I haven't, I don't remember all the details in the moment, but I saw photos, at least from evidence from the babies that were victim in that case to abortion. And there's no way you cannot convince me. I mean, I don't, and I've seen, hey, I've seen horror films. I've seen thrillers. I jump out of my seat. I get scared. I've been unnerved by things, but even I'm desensitized to some images. The minute I saw those photos, it just, it, to me, the practice of abortion it's just, it, it, it's so barbaric in its result. I mean, there's no way for me to dispute looking at that. That and It's such a stupid argument. Like, that that's not a, a fetus in the way it's described. It makes it sound like it, it, it's something entirely different. It's a baby. It's flat out a baby. At least one photo I saw. And I, again, I'll leave it in the context of the articles because they were fairly graphic. And I would recommend, I would think every pro-choice person, or every, uh, now let's be more specific, every pro-abortion advocate should be made to look at those photos and honestly argue that that's not a baby. But, there's just no way you can't convince me. But even if you're a pro-life person, I mean, you'll look at it and you'll obviously be in the camp that I was. But it was just, it was so sad to see that. And so for me, I'm firmly against abortion. Now, I'll be very clear. I understand when it comes to abortion that the argument itself and the, and the conversation surrounding it, this is a very sensitive matter to touch. I mean, again, we're dealing with that now, obviously, with, this, with the result of a SCOTUS decision. You see much of the fallout online from that and the outrage that swept over. Although, again, to be clear, this isn't banning abortion. This is just reverting it back to a state's rights issue from my understanding. Maybe there's a little couple more nuances to it, but that's the general takeaway. It's not what's being portrayed, which is more hyperbolic in nature. 
But as far as abortion is concerned, um, it is a very sensitive matter. So the subject matter itself, because again, there's so many areas that this touches, needs to be treated delicately and favorably towards every uh, situation. But as far as the procedure goes for abortion, I am vehemently against every aspect of it. I think it's just, it's a, it's a horrible practice. Um, and for me, I, I understand that there is a need for um, support, perhaps. And there's a lot of families that might come into this, the uh, um, situation where abortion would be a considered option. I am very, I don't say this, by the way, we're about to contribute here to boast in any manner. I just like to be able to say, put some, you know, work into where my decisions are. I'm really happy to see that there are many different agencies around that are really trying to support people amid a difficult decision like what abortion would produce. I happen to be a volunteer liaison for a local church, within, or actually my church in my area, um, on part of a local pregnancy clinic. They're a great agency, great aid to families, especially women. They basically provide everything that Planned Parenthood does, from my understanding, void of referrals for or procedures for abortions, because again, it's a pro-life agency, and it's mostly uh, church-supported. And you know, obviously, they got other sponsorships that come in, I'm sure, for the funding, but... I'm very grateful to work on behalf of an organization that not only cares about um, the, the issue per, er, pertaining to abortion, but for the people behind it that might find themselves in such a difficult position, whether that be, you know, just an unexpected pregnancy and they don't know what to do, or women who tragically have undergone, you know, physical assault in any way, being, you know, sexual assault specifically or rape. Um, it can be, again, abortion can be a very hard decision for many people. I'm more so of the camp. I mean, I don't like the procedure at all. I am very much anti-abortion, especially when it comes to um, abortion as contraception. I think it's a horrible idea. I think it's the way people go about it, especially being so flippant. I've seen all this rejoicing online. And whatever happened, by the way, to this being a private matter between a woman and her doctor? Like, whatever happened to that argument? Because now it's all about, you go on social media, you go on TikTok, or even Twitter, where they've, you know, compiled TikTok clips, and it's all about these women being like, I got my abortion, I got my abortion, like a celebrity cause. Likes and comments, I mean, I've heard some really disgraceful comments, too. It's just, it's so, the practice itself... I'm grateful to see it being reined in at the very least a little bit. I'm grateful to see, by the way, in the midst of abortion, even with perhaps the overturning of Roe v. Wade and this becoming such a hot topic right now, I'm grateful to see different places rising up to help um, women in need. Because really that's at the center, I think, for most people when concerning an abortion is just an unexpected situation. And for you know, whatever variety of situation, because again, there's so many different places a person can be not knowing where to go. I think it's great that you have agencies, maybe not even specifically related to the church, um, but it's great. But I'm really encouraged to see that Christians are getting so engaged on the issue. But um, I, I'm really, I, the minute that this decision came out with Roe v. Wade, and I know for a fact that my state won't overturn it, they've doubled down on it, but um at the very least, you know, I saw that. At first, I mean, the decision even leaked early. Like, the circumstances of how we knew about this, I knew the decision was probably going to come out around June. Um, but the fact that it leaked early, I mean, that that's just, there's a whole lot of issues there. But at the very least, when it started debuting on social media, it's kind of a surprise being like, I thought this was coming out in June. Like, I knew the time frame, at least as it was, as it was proposed. But then I'm scrolling through Twitter, I'm like, why is Roe v. Wade trending? Oh, because it leaked out early that the Supreme Court might, or at least in their arguments presented, they might overturn it as a federal uh, 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 law. I'm like, I almost jumped out of my seat. I'm happy. But even for someone like me who's so engaged in this matter, I'm not as familiar with, this, with the history of Roe v. Wade. I know the result, and I know the impact of, again, overturning it but, and, and really enforcing it in the first place, but I don't know the history of it. So I'm kind of fascinated to see this documentary from The Daily Wire that is tackling this issue from, again, an argumentative documentary standpoint. I would imagine it's going to be pretty convincing. I mean, you've got people at The Daily Wire who have produced some pretty good work in this area. You also have many voices coming online from various, uh, various different angles, whether it be just on the pro-life work or being expert within the in the medical field or you know practice pertaining to abortion. You have them rising up and talking about the issue. It's great. I'm really grateful to see it. But there's been some pretty strong pictures of in the cinema field regarding abortion. Unplanned, for example, was a beautiful picture in this area. Really a good film if you've never seen it. Definitely, I would say... Uh, um, a really high quality picture of in Christian cinema. I would also recommend, again, the reason I say that the Daily Wire has some uh, uh, um, support in this one, Andrew Clavin, who's one of their main uh, media pundit faces, um, he was, I think he wrote the screenplay, or even beyond that, he was instrumentally involved. Um, but Gosnell, 
he was attributed to that. And that is an excellent documentary, in my opinion. Really sad picture to watch, but a good one. And I think one that most people should see. But maybe Choosing Death will have that uh, elevation in the way people uh, see this issue. And maybe people, remember, they think of the issue of abortion or Roe v. Wade. They'll think back on this film because it will be a good learning experience. Even for someone like me, who's not as familiar with the law itself. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the trailer and let's see another entry within the Daily Wire's work. I'm sure it'll be good. Even just from a film standpoint. Here we go. Or a documentary one, I should be more specific. <clears throat> That's a beautiful um, image to begin it on. Many times when That's what abortion centers around, a baby. Let's not forget that. This. It's not a fetus. I mean, technically a scientific term, but the way uh, they use that word is ridiculous. It's like, would as if it's a separate entity. Again, crying and protesting. But once we had begun dilating the cervix and passing instruments into the uterus, it was too late to stop. I was handing hush money to women who we had left pieces of their baby. We had put these women's lives in jeopardy. We had put their lives. They have at expert risk, witness. And we were Abby Johnson, former um, uh, clin or clinic owner, I believe, or clinic manager at, at Planned Parenthood um, facility. Unplanned, if you've not seen it, centered around her story, by the way. I mean, there have been so many moments in the last decade. Leading plus voice. Going undercover in abortion clinics myself and seeing just heartbreaking things. Women vomiting in the hallway of an abortion clinic, crying out in pain. The late term abortionists talking casually that, about that's how they would the Washington DC story a born alive baby to die. Or if you deliver the baby in the toilet, then you pick it up and stuff it in the Oh no, that one specifically, that was a doctor. Babies are being born alive and the backs of their necks are being slid. God. They are being drowned. Um, their necks are being snapped. It's, it's happening more often than people want to think about. These abortion facilities, these abortion providers, these doctors, they don't care about these women. And you're just you're realizing that you're watching in front of your own eyes play out America's greatest horror story, which is how we butcher children in the name of choice. Let the reality set in though. I'm grateful to see that they're not shirking at least in the potency of the language. <sighs> it's sad. I think a lot of people, you know, I heard a story. I'm going to try to source this. Um, May 14th is when that's streaming. Okay, there's the official release. I'm a little bit behind on covering this. Mm -hmm. Apologies. There was a story that a, a, a little while ago that someone referred to me. I'm going to try and source it the best I can. Some people just in the general vicinity were asked, in terms of being pro-choice, do you know what the reality of that means? And having the abortion procedure described. And that changed a lot of people's hearts. I think there's probably a lot of people that... Yeah, I mean, you see people protesting, you've got people outside, you know, screaming about the issue of abortion, especially in today's climate. I mean, it's not that I like to get into politics on this channel, but as far as I'm concerned, abortion is not necessarily a political matter. It has political um, uh, tentacles, but it's not necessarily, again, a political issue fundamentally. It just has... The I would say a large part of the reason that it's gotten so heated is because, again, the political integration. It's not about the baby, and it's not about the practices of what abortion entails or even how what time frame it happens i mean again i don't like to get political on this channel necessarily because i don't like to you know put people in that type of situation of being like oh you know it's it just politics is such a messy place to tread and i do believe it again fundamentally abortion is not a political issue uh it's more than that but it just has political intersections but i would say what was happening back in like 2019 of a lot of the presidential debates that were happening and like one person being Tulsi Gabbard, I, I disagree with some of her points, but I respect her quite a bit, at least a lot of her insights. And one of the few people on there that was actually saying, again, I'm of the camp, abortion, just do away with the procedure outright. But at the very least, I'm like, well, if we can, you know, get at least one of you in a position where you're like with some limiters and restrictions versus everybody else on stage for the most part like oh abortion whenever post-birth i mean it's just it, it, it's it, it's just insane it, it, just how far it's gone and you read about some of these cases i mean again the gosnell story epicentered around a lot of this, the 
the heartache that's come with some of the barbaric practices regarding abortion. I mean, it's just, it's, it's just sad. Um, I'm really, really pleased by this documentary. And again, I don't know all the facets to row. This is definitely centered around the abortion conversation overall, but the way the synopsis presented this, it's going to dive more, I'd say in terms of the legal perspective too, to that fundamental issue, which is going to be a great insight for me. Cause again, I'm not as familiar with the actual law. I'm just familiar again with the result and the overall implication being, you know, where we're at today with abortion. And it's just, there's no other way for me to define it other than it's such a barbaric, procedure i i'm 100 percent against it now as i said there are many factors to consider you know in regard to children but you know it's like we, why do we why does the practice have to be we that a child's life is exterminated why is that the procedure why does a child have to be killed like can't you have and i know for some people it's like well you know with pregnancy especially if we're dealing with um Jessica Jones, for example, uh, the the Marvel or formerly Marvel Netflix series, now technically Marvel because it's on Disney Plus, dealt with this issue, and I maybe I did disagree with the outcome a bit. Now again, this is a fictionalized story, but they dealt with the the question they, that series dealt with a lot, but the question of abortion regarding um, being from a standpoint of uh, uh, development from rape, because again that was centric to the Hope Van or not Hope Van Dyne, the Hope Schlotman character that she. Or the, okay, I, I won't go into spoilers too much, but again, the center, the, the whole series is basically around trauma uh, to varying degrees and um, abuse to several uh, variations. But you have a character who was assaulted. And then in that situation, she ended up getting pregnant. And there's a line in there where she is on the bed and she's basically considering again the possibility of an abortion. And she says flat out, you know, I'm being, the feeling of me carrying this pregnancy, which she says, it describes as a thing, that's how she defines it. Maybe, I mean, I'm still like, well, it's still a baby, but I can at least acknowledge your pain. I fully get it. But um, it totally empathize. But then the line that she was describing of, you know, I'm being, and this is the way she said it, like I'm being raped over and over and over. It's sort of like, it's a reminder of that experience. It may be a trigger for her. There's a huge place when it comes to the abortion landscape where encouragement is needed. And I would say it in the issue of assault. The baby's not the problem, but I'm of the camp that, that you can possibly make good out of a bad situation, right? The Bible talks about that as well. That that does, oftentimes that happens, right? That God can work things according to his purposes in a bad situation. I don't think a baby should suffer for the cost of the father. If anything, in that situation, you should have people coming alongside from every corner of the world, pretty much encouraging that woman, you know, to in however she needs it to help her with, through that trauma. But also with the pregnancy, you've got families all across the world, I'm sure, that want to adopt. Um, that would love to have children who maybe can't have children, maybe want to adopt some in their own family. I understand it's a very detailed issue, but it's one that we need to treat with sensitivity. I'm not beyond suggesting that, even if, again, I'm adamantly against the procedure of abortion. I don't believe a child should be killed in the womb for either the sins of the father or as a method of contraception or for whatever exterior reason to that. But I think we're in a good place right now in regard to the debate. I think more people are starting to see what's happening. I think projects perhaps like Choosing Death, The Legacy of Roe are going to help with that for people who might not necessarily be as invested with the conversation or might just think again, you know, well, it's just someone, you know, ending a pregnancy, right? They might not think of necessarily what's entailed by that, um, especially with the emotional stuff. I mean, there's a song that I listened to years ago. I didn't know at first what, it, what the original inspiration was um, until I heard a story about it, but it's by a very well-known Christian group called Skillet. If you're not familiar with them, I'm sure probably many people are even apart from the Christian label. I know they're very popular in the mainstream sphere, but they put a song on their album a couple of years ago, uh, Awake. It's at the end of the album. It's called Lucy. And it's a song about a family who chose abortion. And after that, they, I believe they ended up creating a, um, uh, uh, a grave site for her and they hadn't, I don't believe, named the baby then yet. But the way that they, they saw her, um, that's a beautiful song. It, just, it moves you to tears when you listen to it. But it's it's a couple coming to terms again with the loss of their child through abortion, for choosing an abortion procedure and being instilled with the hope someday of seeing that child again in heaven, right? But still that that, that grief and that pain that comes with an abortion procedure and the final result i i it's just it, it's so sad to me um but i'm grateful to see this issue is finally being spotlighted i'm 
really elated by the prospect of the Supreme Court decision, if, if again, the circumstances were not ideal for that decision to be revealed publicly yet. And I'm grateful that projects like Choosing Death for Legacy of Roe, while featuring expert testimonials like Abby Johnson, um, I'm grateful to see projects like this exist because I think there definitely needs to be more of a light broad or shown to other areas of the world, perhaps, that aren't as invested in the conversation and could deserve to know a little more about the procedure that happens of abortion. I'm grateful to see projects like this coming up. But what are your guys' thoughts? You might entirely disagree with my perspective. You know, I understand, again, people are all over the camp in terms of this issue, in terms of, you know, out outlooks or philosophy. But that's just my take. You know, that's just how I feel about it. Feel free to let me know what your thoughts are down below. I think overall, if I could speak to the quality of the project, it's a good documentary. I like the framework, again, of presenting an argument and then showing that effectiveness for, again, you know, evidentiary proof. It looks good. I mean, from the Daily Wire, from the projects I've seen from them at this point, and no, being so familiar with them as a, as a company, I'm sure it will more than deliver um, not only a good picture, but a deep one that deserves to have that type of quality to it and that will motivate conversation, perhaps in a better and brighter future direction. Thank you so much for watching this video. Before you bounce, feel free to drop a like and comment, subscribe to this channel with a ding on the bell, and share this video with your friends. And consider checking out the description here. There you'll find links to my other channels, as well as addresses to my other social media accounts and ways you can help support my work if you feel so inclined. May God bless you, and looking forward to when our paths cross again.